Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. I'm Franco Scribanti. I'm the driver of uh, the Porsche next to us here. It's made for the South African series where anything really goes. It's basically a GT3 race spec car, two-wheel drive, twin turbo, lots of horsepower. In South Africa, we have a sort of a series that's different to probably most places, where it's, an, it's sort of an extreme sports car cup type race. There's very few rules. A lot of what a lot of the people do who we compete against, they bring in GT3 cars and they up-spec them or make them more powerful, they take the restrictors out, run them on ethanol, add water meth, add more aero, all sorts of things. And that was sort of the cause at the top for quite some time. You know, how this project started is we were almost challenged into, it wasn't believed that we could build something that could take on a GT3, or well, let's call it a factory car. Some of those sort of top guys in the series challenged, you could say, almost laughed at us that we would attempt such a tall order of building a car that would beat the best that the factories could, could bring. And as you can see, that is what we've now done. I mean, it's taken, taken two or three years to get there. I think this car's been five or six years since it left the road as a road car. And it's just gotten it stronger and stronger. And uh, we are hoping to decimate the opposition this year. We chose the Porsche to work with because the platform of a Porsche allows so much. There's so much different customer projects going around across the world that you can, you can feed off that a bit, you can see what's going on, you can see what the latest ideas are. And besides the ups and downs of being a Porsche with the engine in the back, and there's a lot of ups besides the downs that people talk of, like braking and that sort of thing, by different weight distribution. This car has an engine or a horsepower package that surpasses most in what you can do with it all the time and how you can upgrade it all the time. So as my car gets faster, the cars that, the cars that started with this car are already sold, they're gone, they're worthless. We've probably got the third or the fourth generation of GT3 car still being beaten by this car as we uplift and upgrade this car all the time. So we've got a package that lasts for many years and we think this will still be winning, a winning car for possibly another five years. Those cars are in five years on many additions down the line. Which we, and they've then spent a lot more money on upgrading all the time to the latest package, the latest fastest package, where we can just make this faster and faster as we go. My name is Marco da Costa. I'm the tuning specialist for Scribante Racing. It's an evolving process and we've been doing it for the, quite a few years with this Porsche. So it's an ongoing thing and it's always monitoring to make sure that the car is always healthy at the track and to try and problem solve on the fly, which is pretty challenging. There's a lot of this car that you can't buy off the shelf. I mean, you can see our latest trick is the turbo fans. I mean, they're from yesteryear. They were banned in period. I don't think there's a place where you could go into a shop and say, can I have that? It's not done. This is all in-house. You can see by the, the quality of the build, this is like a road car. It could be a show car. The paintwork, 
the wheels, the, I mean, if you open up and you see the suspension from the dashboard that was once made out of surfboard foam, was, it was hand, hand shaped. I'm Eugene Katzka, so what I do, I do all the um, fabrication, welding, all those kind of things. My name is Christopher de Swart, uh, better known as Chippy. I do all the, the paintwork and bodywork on all the cars. So I don't think there's a better team than us on this moment with, with the way we work and the way we do things. So yeah, we know each other, when we talk to each other, we know how we think. When I tell Kurbis, all I've got to say is, I'm not liking this, or I'm understeering in the far stuff going that way, he knows what to do. So my name is Kurbis Jonker. I'm the, the race manager slash engineer, engine builder, gearbox builder, uh, setup guy. Okay, so the Porsche base was a, a Turbo S and uh, the first bodywork was a GT3R 2014 model Le Mans body shape. We've imported from Germany and from there on we started working. It's not, I think the only thing that if I have to think about it, there's nothing of that book. The doors. The doors and the roof is the only thing that's left from the original body that came from Germany, the carbon body. The rest of the whole body was, was our design and it was mainly for airflow around the car. To get air to the intercoolers was our biggest challenge. And then also for the packaging for the, the turbos and the, the air intakes to the turbos and the intercoolers was a, a major challenge for us. The car is running on a four-way adjustable Penske shock, uh, which I think I've got now on the, 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 the 20th iteration of valving to, to get it to work, but we found a happy medium now with that. We're running Eibach springs front and rear on the car. The wheels is a special design that we did with two in the United States that we're currently running, but the next upgrade would be magnesium wheels. That's on my wish list. Uh, we're running a PWR radiator in the front, PWR cores at the back for the intercooler. We're running Garrett new Gen 2 GT30 turbos. The size is our, is our secret, but it's a GT30, but it's a, it's a special design turbo that we spec for the car. Running our own exhaust, a titanium exhaust on the car. We're running teal wastegates, turbo smart dump valves, a uh, big 82 millimeter throttle body, uh, M-Ray from S Motors intake manifold billet. The head design in the car, the valves is, is our design, but it's a, a Anthony Taylor spec head that he did a special conversion for us on the lifters. Uh, he also did a special cam profile for us for the turbo to make the turbo spool up quicker. We're running a M150 Motec ECU. We're running a C125 Motec dash. We run a C187 rear view camera dash. Uh, we run a Motec PDM30 for the power distribution modules. Uh, mainly Motec electronic wise in the car. We run ride height sensors, we run droop sensors, we run com uh, compression sensors, we run tire temperature sensors, and then we run a whole lot of sensors that's, that's our secret sensors. So there's a lot of tech in the car. We run AP calipers front and rear, big AP discs, 390 discs in the front, 287 at the back. Uh, we run proper side shafts and uh, CV snouts that's been made in the UK, our design. Yeah, the MXT gearbox, uh, the base of the engine is a M97 Porsche engine with uh, Gorilla rods, uh, CP Gorilla rods, CP Gorilla pistons. Um, uh, cometic gaskets, head gaskets, and special bearings. So, oh, and then also we run a, a special uh, oil pump that came from Sweden in the car. So, so the turbo fans for me, uh, you know, we, we rebuilt the car now and we've changed the color and changed a lot of things on the car, but I just couldn't feel the car because I knew that I'm almost done with the turbo fans and I couldn't wait, and as soon as we put that turbo fans onto the car, it's like, this is it. This is now the next level of just showcasing all our abilities at what we can do. And, and yeah, the turbo fans was 
in the beginning, Franco's idea, and he started nagging me, build me turbo fans, please let's build turbo fans. And I'm actually so proud of it because you can see the effect of the turbo fans. We were struggling with brake temperatures. And what a lot of people don't understand is, it, it, it's got a bigger job than just looking after your brake temperatures. It's a very effective tool that we can have on the car and that we're also proud to say it's just another thing that we as a team can actually put out there and to make it to work, you know, develop it even further. So just to give you a little bit of, of power specs on the engine, we, we had the engine on NJR's hub dyno and, and I'm going to tell you why we did this. We, we, we pushed it to see how much it can make. So it can make well above 1,300 wheel horsepower. And we've seen it because we had to actually put some of the crew on the front of the, the bonnet because it wanted to lift up on the hub dyno. And that's the reason why we cannot race the car on that amount of horsepower because the Porsche is, is, is so temperamental in lifting his wheels up. We actually race it on much lower horsepower than that. And we trimming the horsepower in at the end. It's only coming in far at the end when the aero comes into play and can keep the nose down. So we've seen that figures on, on the dyno, but we're racing it well under those. We do not to, not to 100 speeds, at, we had it at the yield climb once, and you see not to 100 speeds, although it's never built for that, like 2.7, 2.6 not to 100, which is not bad for a car that's on a race slick, and it's actually a, a circuit car. It's not built for any of that stuff. You don't build it to squat, you don't build it to make traction off the line. Your first gear ratio is long, so we've seen not to 100 in 2.6, 2.7 seconds, but it's not built for that. Look, you know, this, this is an extremely fast car. I mean, your most experienced driver would uh, get out of this car with his eyes very, very wide. When you first get involved in a Porsche, I think for a driver as well as an engineer, I'm sure Kurvis will attest to this, it's a whole new ball game of not just setting a car up because everything's upside down and back to front, but to drive it as well with that weight at the back and to get used to it and to ultimately trust it. You know, we've all got traction control on all the modern day cars. But with turbos this size and this amount of horsepower on tap, if that happened to not be working, for example, you'd find yourself in a hell of a lot of trouble very, very quickly. Not only is Cars at Coza the best place to find your dream car, but it's also the easiest place to sell your current car. Check out the sell car section on our main website. Simply list your car's details and all of our dealers will take bids on your car. You just choose the highest price. Boom, your car's gone. On to your next one. Right, thanks very much for watching the video. Okay, uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm finished now. Cars at Coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars.